some questions at you here. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Matt Preem from 247 Sports. Hey, Ryan. Um, curious, just kind of your time at Oregon coming in as a walk-on, and, and you've made the travel roster almost every year, and just kind of what's this opportunity like for you and, and just your journey in your first few years here at Oregon? Yeah, uh, I would say the biggest thing for me so far has just been taking advantage of every opportunity that's been given to me. Um, you know, where, wherever that is, you know, whether that's scout team with the twos, with the ones, whatever it may be, uh, take advantage of it, make the most of my opportunity, and uh, be sure that I'm a guy that can be trusted if I'm called upon in a game. Uh, next up, James Krapia, the Oregonian. I just want to see uh, who's been working with you uh, on each side of you at the guard positions. Yeah, we've uh, we've actually been doing a lot of rotations, you know, because COVID, we don't know who's going to be available every single week. So we're trying to get as many guys as ready, uh, as ready as possible at every position. So they've been really working everybody everywhere. I know that's kind of a cliche answer, but that's really the truth right now. You know, we don't know who's going to be where, um, who's going to be available what week, who's not. So uh, Coach Mirabal's done a really good job of making sure that we uh, get everyone reps everywhere so that uh, – Whatever the circumstances may be, we're ready to play. Uh, next up, AJ Jacobson from Rivals. Hey, Ryan, I don't know if you knew this, but Justin Herbert is also from Sheldon, as you are. Um, <laughs> tell me about what it's like watching him play down there with the Chargers. Yeah, it's, it's uh, really cool. You know, uh, a lot of people who have known Justin have known how special his talent is for a lot of years. And so to see him uh, be able to go out and live his dream and really be a star at the next level is uh it's, it's awesome to see and uh, I think he's he's earned every bit of that and so to see him go out and fulfill that is uh really cool especially you know knowing him for so many years and him being a local guy uh next Ryan Thorburn the register guard Tyler obviously has been studying under Justin how are they similar and, and how are they different uh, I think Tyler has done a great job. He's got a great command of the offense, uh, but he's had a great command of the offense, you know, with the twos for the last couple of years. Um, and he, he's done a really good job. He understands protections really well. He understands what we want to do in the run game, uh, the numbers in the box and where guys are going to be coming from. You know, he's done a great job of redirecting us in protections, which is huge for us to get a body on everybody so that he's not taking unnecessary hits. And I think that's just a big part of it is uh, him understanding everything. And he's really taken ownership, taking leadership. And I think he learned some of that from Justin. I think some of that's also Tyler and his personality, and he loves doing that. So uh, I think that's really helped uh, our offense as a whole. Uh, we'll go to Max Torres from Scooped Up. Ryan, great to meet you. Uh, you as an offensive lineman, you kind of have the unique opportunity of having uh, an offensive line-minded coach uh, as your head coach. Um, kind of walk me through it. What's it like at practice, you know, with Cristobal having to be kind of everywhere at once, but then also having Mirabal there coaching you? Yeah, I would say uh, Coach Mirabal is definitely a direct reflection of Coach Cristobal, and they're, they're echoing the same thing at all times. And so whether Coach Cristobal is with us during an individual drill or not, uh, we're still getting the same coaching, and they say the same stuff to us all the time. And so if he's there, you know, it's just an extra set of eyes for us to coach us and teach what uh, they want us to do. And if he's not there, you know, we don't really skip a beat. You know, Coach Mirabal, Coach Terry, Coach Cristobal, they've got us all dialed in to our jobs, our technique, our fundamentals, and that's really important for us. Next, Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Hey, Ryan, nice to meet you. Um, as a guy who grew up in Eugene, you know, and, and came here as a walk-on. Were you expecting this, or is this kind of just surreal to be going through this? And, and what were your other opportunities for football um, aside from walking on at Oregon? Did you have other options when uh, when you're making that decision a couple years ago? Yeah. So when I was in high school, uh, my senior year, I actually tore my ACL, so I had no senior uh, football tape. So schools didn't really have a ton to offer me off of, other than my junior season, and I was pretty small my junior season, so. A lot of schools looked at that and, you know, they said they didn't really have a basis to offer me off of. So I had some uh, I had some small schools. I had some Division II schools uh, in the state of Oregon that offered me scholarships. Um, I had some other walk-ons at some FCS schools. But when the opportunity came up here at Oregon, it was something I just couldn't pass up on. You know, it's been a dream to play here. And, you know, it is it is a little surreal at times, but it's uh, it's definitely something that I just take day by day. 
Next question, Tyson Alger from The Athletic. Hey, Ryan, just kind of following up on Max's question from earlier. Has, has the way that Mirabal and Cristobal coached you guys over the years changed at all as, as they've kind of grown more, not necessarily comfortable in their, their roles, but obviously Cristobal used to be the offensive line coach and went to head coach and probably had a million things going on. Like, has that dynamic between those two evolved at all over at, noticeably at all? Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, obviously I was here in 2017 when coach Chris Paul was the offensive line coach. So he's a little less involved during individual drills, obviously, cause he's got to have his eyes on the whole team. So that's, that's a little bit of a difference, but no, they really haven't changed much since they've been here together coaching. Uh, next up, Matt Preem, 247 sports. Yeah, Ryan, uh, you may know Tyler Shuck the best out of anyone on this team being his roommate. Um, why do you think he's been able to, garner the respect of the team, you know, across the board, offense, defense, so quickly. A lot of guys on both sides mentioned just how much of, of a good leader he is. Well, I think the first thing is he's, he's one of the hardest working guys on the team. And, you know, when you're one of those guys, you know, you're automatically going to gain a lot of respect right off the bat. So I think he's done that really well is he came in and he works his tail off every single day. And that's really important when you're a leader. And then the other thing is, I mean, he's really vocal. He's, I mean, he's great friends with a lot of guys on this team. There's a lot of guys that really like him and respect him as a person, first of all. And then second of all, they see he's a hard worker and he's a good player. And so I think that all just comes together to earn the respect of the team. Uh, next, James Krupia, the Oregonian. Ryan, a little bit into the weeds, but what changes for the center from a mechanical or technical standpoint in this offense when it's not as much if at any pistol by comparison to what you were running, I mean, just from the depth of the quarterback and uh, again, not trying to give away anything, but if, I mean, traditional shotgun versus pistol is different. So just what, what changes from the center's perspective? Uh, from the center's perspective, really nothing changes. You know, we don't, we don't get told whether they're in gun or whether they're in pistol, you know, that's, that's not something that we're worried about. Uh, we just get told the aiming point of the back and we know that on every single play. And so that's going to change, you know, our landmarks in terms of our hat placement and, uh, you know, what, what combination blocks we want to work on a certain play, but it doesn't – mechanically, it doesn't change anything for the center. Next question goes to A.J. Jacobson from Rivals. Your name has actually come up several times in the last couple of weeks when we've asked coaches and players to say who's caught your eye, you know, who's been doing a good job. Ryan, so what do you think – you are doing right this camp that is catching these coaches and these players eyes that they're mentioning you in these interviews. Uh, I just, I come in every day and I try to work as hard as I can. I try to be the best teammate I can be. I try to do everything I can to make sure that uh, I'm helping this team win and whatever the job that may be, whatever position I got to play, whatever it means. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do every single day. And so um, I appreciate the guys have noticed that. But I don't, I don't come in just trying to get attaboys from, you know, guys on the team. I come in, try and do my job and make sure the coaches know that uh, they can trust me if I need to go into a game. Uh, next, Ryan Thorburn from the Register Guard. Ryan, at Rose Bowl, I was talking to Shane Lemieux, and he said Alex Forsythe would, probably would have started, you know, on most other teams in the country. Um, what does it say about him that he's kind of waited his time and, and now – um, is kind of being talked about as the leader of your group. What's it been like to go through this with him? Uh, well, I think, first of all, I think Shane's absolutely right when he said that. I think Alex would have started at all, probably every other school in the country last year. You know, he was ready to play. And if we needed to call on him last year, he was going to be absolutely ready to go. And I think that's a testament to him as a person and as a player. Uh, he prepares as hard or harder than every single person on this team every single week, whether he was with the ones, twos, or threes, he was – going into every single game like he needed to start and play 75 snaps and so he's really just carried that over to this year where you know he's a guy now he's a leader and he's really stepped into that role really well and I think that's really important for our offensive line to have a guy like that. Uh, next Max Torres Gupta. Yeah Ryan uh, over the years we've kind of seen Oregon known for a variety of positions you know dynamic backs like Anthony Thomas and and Royce and quarterbacks like Marcus and Justin. Uh, what's it kind of been like for you, you know, in these recent years uh, with Panay and Tyrell uh, looking like they're going to be, Tyrell is in the league, but uh, we're seeing kind of an offensive line U tradition kind of developing. What's that like for you? Uh, it's really cool to be a part of, you know, those guys, those older guys really showed us, you know, what it's like 
what it takes to be a great college offensive line. And so at this point, we're just trying to follow in their footsteps and do the things that they did that made them so successful to help that, to help us be uh, as successful as they were. And so we're just trying to, uh, just trying to do what they were doing so that we can be as successful as they were. Next, Tyson Alger, The Athletic. I forget who tweeted this, but I've seen it a couple times of like comparing Tyler to like Drew Locke with that that rapping, dancing gif, gif, however you want to uh, pronounce it. But like, is, is that like a similar like personality comparison of just like, it, it looks like Tyler's a guy who like wants to have fun out there. And it, it seems, you know, obviously he hasn't, hasn't been out there for fantasy yet, but is that kind of the type of persona to expect? Yeah, I, I would say it's, that's a fair comparison. You know, Tyler's always having fun. Um, but I would I would never say he takes uh, having fun over, you know, making sure the work's done right and done properly every single time. So I think, you know, he's definitely a work first guy. But when it's time to have fun, Tyler, definitely have some fun. Next up, James Krapia, the Oregonian. Ryan, I wouldn't really I'd, I'd wait, but uh, in COVID and all this stuff, uh, I'm not sure the next time we'll, we'll talk to you necessarily. Um, I know you said you're not up for attaboys, but Austin Fowley gave me more than an attaboy. He said you should be on scholarship. And when guys are opting out, you know, before all that, this team was full at 85, but they're not anymore. Um, if that were to happen at some point before this season, just how do you think you react? What would that mean to you if that happens? Uh, I mean, obviously I'd be happy, but that's not something that I worry about every single day. Um, that's that's something that's out of my control. And uh, Coach Chris Paul always talking about control, what we can control. And I think that goes down to a personal level too, you know. So uh, I come in every day, control what I can control. Uh, that's my my attitude, my effort, you know, those types of things. And so I try to control that every single day. And then whatever else happens, happens. And that's out of my control. Uh, back to Tyson Alger from The Athletic. Just what's the scouting report on Tyler as a roommate? Uh, Tyler, Tyler's a great roommate to have. Uh, scouting report would probably be he likes probably every single genre of music you could think of. He's a movie connoisseur. Uh, they actually give me they actually give me a lot of crap because I haven't seen as many movies as they have, and so I uh, I get dogged on a lot for uh, my lack of movie watching. So uh, he's he's a great roommate. Him and Alex are great to have as roommates. Um, we, yeah, we have a lot of fun together. Looks like that's all we got for you, Ryan. Appreciate the time. Thank you.